You're listening to Protecting What Matters by the Ohio Department of Commerce. Commerce is Ohio's chief regulator, and we play a vital role in keeping you safe by protecting your property, your money, and some of the products you use every day. This is designed to bring awareness to important issues and help educate consumers and businesses. Join us as we chat with trusted industry experts focused on providing you with the tools you need to help you protect what matters most in your life. Traditions are amazing and they bring a lot of predictability with kids and it helps them set the tone for themselves. It also just really helps minimize the overspending because they know what they're going to get, they know what to ask for, um, and it helps you too to be very organized because that's another thing I think a lot of people struggle with over the holidays is the, the chaos of everything, the unorganization comes into play, and then you're really not paying attention to what's coming out of your wallet and what's going in. So. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Protecting What Matters. I'm Michaela Hunt, the Chief Communications Officer here at the Ohio Department of Commerce, and we are officially in holiday shopping season. It can be a really exciting time during the year, you know that, for families, though it can be very stressful, whether it's your finances or if you're just stumped in the gift giving department. The Division of Financial Institutions wants to help parents tackle tough financial conversations during what is often really a magical time. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. In this episode, we'll talk about how to have these types of financial focused conversations with your children and how you can incorporate some financial focused gifts even under the tree this holiday season. With me today is DFI's Office of Consumer Affairs Manager, Victoria Yurkovic. Good to see you again, Victoria. Same here. So this is not easy to talk about with kids. And I'm so glad we're having this conversation like so many other parents because I know there's moments that I could be talking about money during the holiday season, but it's also such a really busy time. So is it possible to do this in the midst of the hustle and bustle or should I have been doing this months ago? It is. So it's it's kind of twofold. So you should be doing it kind of year round. It doesn't kind of like stop or halt around special occasions or holidays because it's kind of when we need financial literacy to really come to the forefront. We really need to use our smart skills with um, money management and budgeting and saving. Um, so you can always have these very fluid, teachable moments throughout the year, but it's especially important during a time where you feel like you're chaotic and rushed because these are the times you can kind of think out loud and have conversations. So it kind of steers you away from being so stressed out feeling like everything's on you and you kind of open the table up to your family especially your kids and really explain like you don't want to be like this when you're older you don't want to be <laughs> stressed out and and feel like you didn't budget appropriately or you're running last minute to find things so getting these moments for them to really understand it then when it comes to the teaching moments of here's how we budget and here's how we save for the future it it kind of they are able to see the pros and cons in front of them. So we connect the dots during the holiday season as we're making the purchases. And on top of that, I love that we're going to talk about financial focused gifts because those don't necessarily easily crop up on a kid's wish list. No, they don't. Nobody's saying, I want, you know, the game of life because I want to learn how to, you know, have a successful career and, you know, pay for all my bills, mom and dad. <laughs> you know, they're thinking, you know, uh, what they see in on TV commercials or what their friends are talking about. So there are a lot of clever gifts that you can actually give and kind of put into the mix where they're not like, why are you giving me this money focused gift? It's kind of like, here's an add on to something that you've wanted. Or I kind of explain other ways that we can incorporate financial literacy into things they probably will be getting like new electronic devices. So those types of things can kind of be in the mix for this holiday season. Well, fantastic. It's going to be a great episode. We thank you all for listening. So let's let's dive in a little bit to some of the specifics and the tactics. Why do you feel the holidays can be a really great time to talk about finances? You alluded to some of it in the introduction, but what else? So yeah, so I alluded to the fact that we're not going to halt our financial literacy learning capabilities because it's the holidays. Yes, we're stressed out. And yes, it's one of those times of years where it's like it's one more thing I don't really want to add to my list is trying to teach my kids how not to be stressed out during this time. But it's important during this time because we're looking at gift giving and we're looking at trying to understand our own wants and needs and our family's wants and needs. So this is a really good time to take it to the basics because the first lessons for a lot of young children when they're learning about financial literacy is the difference between wants 
and needs. And that really leads like the main component to when we start to dive into, okay, do I want something? Do I need this? Do I have the funds for it? If I do want it, how do I get it? And that's all about basic budgeting, basic saving, investing, long-term, short-term, and then so forth. So when you're buying gifts for family members, is this a good time to have that conversation with the kids as they're out shopping with you or you're wrapping presents talking about wants, needs, and costs. Yes, because it's a good way to say, here is what I'm thinking we're gonna get for your dad, or what do you wanna get for your dad, or what do we wanna get for grandma and grandpa this year? And you can start to kind of dive into, you know, what I can afford to buy for them. Um, maybe your child has a great idea because they know that your uh, their father likes a, maybe a hobby and they wanna focus on getting them something geared towards that. Um, you can even open it up to them to kind of think of, okay, I don't really have a lot of money because maybe you don't provide an allowance or maybe you provide only a small allowance. So they have to be a little bit creative and thinking outside the box like maybe I need to make something or maybe I need to offer you know, uh, a gift that's more of like my service. Like I remember when I was younger, I knew that I could only, you know, buy so much and it was usually the Christmas sales at the, at the schools. Um, but then I also would be like, on an add-on, I would, you know, make these little tags and then it would give it to my dad and be like, here is one free chore that you can use <laughs> to have me do extra. Or I'm going to, you know, um, for my mom, it's, you know, I'm gonna do your hair one day and here's your free ticket. So like utilizing your services, as I say, you know, um, doing extra chores or, you know, making them something if you're really creative, those also can be good gift options and um, starts the conversation of, you know, how do we think outside the box when it comes to gift giving. One other question, you wrote a really great resource last year called Santa's Not a Millionaire, because Santa comes into the mix of this as well. Yes. And kids can put some pretty extreme things on their wish list for Santa. How do we have that conversation with our kids? So you can approach it in a couple different ways. For those families that love the concept of writing Santa a letter, I kind of gave the option of approaching it in a twofold process. Your wish list, and then your Santa list. And this, again, goes back to basic wants and needs. So your child, let's say you say, you know what, if there's everything and anything under the moon that you can get for Christmas, what do you want? Put it on a list. And you help them craft that list. And then you say, okay, and on that wish list, what are, what, what are the items that you really, really want for Christmas this year? And that's when you can set the tone as the parent or the family to say, you know, we can only have them get, you know, three items this year, or we can only really have them you know, we can only budget for, let's say, $200 for our children this year. So we really have to like sway them into making good choices on what they really want. But this is your opportunity to explain to them, you know, here's what you can, if you want everything and anything, let me know what it is, but then let's break it down to what it is that we absolutely want. Because that again, circles back to the wants and needs and really circles back to, you know, the desire of wanting everything and giving them the opportunity to say they're not probably going to get everything they want in life. Yeah, I mean, because let's think about it. Santa is serving tens of millions of children across the world. Mm -hmm. So Santa isn't a millionaire. You really have to, like, break it down to your must, like the things you really, really want to have. Right. I like that advice and in the conversation with them, too. But what if they don't understand, right? You know, and I don't know, hopefully you can share like what age is right to have these conversations because I feel like some kids might not understand the basics or struggle with the fact that they may not get what they want. Right. There's a, there's a good age when they're very young, they don't understand. You know, infants don't understand what they're getting. Young toddlers don't really understand what they're getting. You get into a place of the age of when they're really around a lot of kids, so school age. So maybe more kindergarten, first grade to about middle school, there's gonna be that elementary level where they might not get it. What do you mean I can't get that? Or what do you mean I'm not gonna get it? Or they're waiting for that special gift and you know you couldn't make it happen and they open up all their gifts and it's not there and it for some reason really strongly affects them. That's when you can kind of incorporate your own philosophy when it comes to Santa, explaining that he goes worldwide, there's only so much that he can give, or you can approach it in a matter of this, you know, basics, this is only what we could get you this year. Telling that to your child is not wrong. It's not gonna it's not gonna create this fear like, oh no, my mom and dad can't buy me this gift this year. It's just letting them know like this is what it is. And a lot of times children at that point will move on from it. If you're worried that your child's gonna feel like it's their responsibility, let them know I'm the parent 
and I'm going to worry about this so you don't, but just so you know, so we can be transparent, this is what can be afforded this year and what can't. And then when they're high school level, that's when you can really be transparent with them. This is our budget this year, and this is kind of what, you can, what we can afford to buy for you, or this is your limit, and you set it, and you be firm with it, and you, you, you know, just set, set it there. Um, you know, you talked a little bit earlier about incorporating kids into the gift buying process with whether it's tasks or things they can do as service or even those school buying opportunities, which I love. One of my kids has a little holiday shop he goes to. What else would you mention in terms of low cost gift ideas and working with your kids, older kids on that? So again, I love the craft idea. I love the services idea. The other thing that you can do too is let's say you don't necessarily have your children buy a gift for the parent or the grandparent. Maybe you're just the person that says, we're buying a gift for grandma or grandpa this year. You can include them in that process. So you could say, you know, grandma really likes these types of flowers. So I really want to get her a bag that incorporates this. Can you go online and look for a canvas bag she would like or this like you can be as specific or vague as you want and have them do the research or when you're in the store say hey we're on a mission we're going to find a gift for grandma we got to find something for grandpa and include them in it and then even when you're at the store if there's a couple different options say you know what's more feasible what do you think we should do should we splurge a little bit or should we you know cut backs and maybe get something else along with that gift having those conversations also on like it gets their mind going to understand the process when you're at the store you're making decisions you're looking at price tags and then you include them even in the checkout um, process because i've been doing this since my kids were able to understand the um, scanners at the store i do self-checkout and i i help they help me scan items they help me they so they um, see the cost yes they, yeah. they see the cost they see the process they know after when it's done that i'm going to pull out my credit card or the debit card and i'm going to pay for it and they see the receipt and they get the whole process um, from start to finish we're going to take a break but when we come back we're going to talk about ways to minimize overspending during the holidays you're listening to protecting what matters Thanks for listening to Protecting What Matters from the Ohio Department of Commerce. We are your resource for all safety information for your home or business. Here's a quick safety message reminder from the Ohio State Fire Marshal's office. So smoke alarms, we want to make sure we're putting those uh, on each level of the house. Uh, Each bedroom that you're at, where anybody sleeps, put that inside that bedroom, and then outside where the people sleep. Um, They're important because what you typically have is that early activation, early notification of something happening, uh, in this case smoke building up, and and that usually is what tells you that there's a fire happening. So having those placed in those locations that are appropriate, making sure that you're uh, checking the alarms themselves about once a month just to make sure that they're working, change the batteries on them, we like to say twice a year right now, and then after 10 years those entire alarms are going to be replaced. For more information on the State Fire Marshal, visit our website at com.ohio.gov slash fire. And be sure to check out some of our previous podcast episodes on all podcast platforms. It's your money. Come and claim it. The Ohio Department of Commerce Division of Unclaimed Funds is currently safeguarding more than $3 billion in unclaimed funds. So there's a good chance you or someone you know has money waiting to be claimed. Just head over to our website, unclaimedfunds.ohio.gov, to search your name, the name of a family member, or a loved one to see if you have an unclaimed fund. Welcome back to Protecting What Matters. We're sitting down today talking with Victoria Yurkovic, the Consumer Affairs Manager for the Division of Financial Institutions, Office of Consumer Affairs. And Victoria, we're talking about the holiday shopping season and really having great conversations with our kids in the midst of the crazy chaotic season it can be when it comes to buying gifts. And before we left, we were going to get to talking about overspending. Oh, you know, budgeting is a big deal for the holidays. How do we minimize overspending, especially if maybe some in our audience aren't the best at always budgeting with a spouse or a partner? So this is always a very touchy subject for a lot of families. It's kind of like it's our, it's, you know, it's our finances, our budget. We don't really need advice. But I often find that it becomes so stressful because people worry that they don't have the funds to commit to what they want to do. So for starters, I like to set realistic expectations. 
So what I mean by that is you set the tone as the family. Maybe your brother, adult brother or sister does things a little bit differently in their family, but you set the tone. Do you want to get a gift for each family member? Do you want to cap how many gifts you give for each family members? Do you want to even do more creative thought processes like white elephants on Christmas morning or maybe a secret Santa type approach to big family gatherings? And you want to have these conversations with your other families, especially if you're going over there. The, the extended house. family. Yes. Got it. Okay. Um, so, and I often feel like internally in our immediate family, a lot of folks don't struggle with this because they're okay with telling their kids, this is what you're going to get. And they're, they have very close conversations with their spouses about what you're going to get each other and, and what you're going to get the kids. But when it comes to the extended family, I think that's when people, their budget really takes a hit because they're not expecting or they're, they feel like they have to give more than others. So I always remind folks, set realistic expectations. Um, but then also with that, you really need to start saving as early as possible. And I like the, the added um, approach to saving for the holidays by using July 25th as the, the, the starting point. Like if you haven't started looking for gifts or budgeting for gifts yet, you should start Christmas in July because it gives you a solid six months to work with um, and you're slowly putting money aside. And this is actually where you can incorporate kids into the process too because you can establish a holiday, a holiday money jar per se and you can put it somewhere in the kitchen, in the living room, letting them know that you're going to just take that extra change that you have or extra money from you know your monthly budget and you're putting it aside towards this spending habit for the holidays. Um, so those types of things can really help with the overspending. And then again, going back to the whole premise of you, you setting the tone for your family, there are a lot of families that utilize the something you want, something you need, something you wear, something you read, utilizing those, setting your own traditions. Traditions are amazing and they bring a lot of predictability with kids and it helps them set the tone for themselves. It also just really helps minimize the overspending because they know what they're going to get. They know what to ask for. Um, and it helps you to, to be very organized because that's another thing I think a lot of people struggle with over the holidays is the, the chaos of everything. The unorganization comes into play and then you're really not paying attention to what's coming out of your wallet and what's going in. So any suggestions, and this is a hard part of it, any suggestions on how to talk with a partner who might do things a little differently than you? And let's say you want to incorporate some of this into this year's holiday. Any any thoughts on how to have that conversation? I, I can't necessarily, because I don't necessarily know this response or what the fear is in having that conversation, but always the biggest thing with coming with, with it comes with finances and couples and families is always having an open dialogue um, and always coming into the conversation with a lot of understanding and open ears. It could be one of those things where it's like, can we talk about this? And obviously you want to talk about this, not during the holidays where it's stressful or even the month or so leading up. You want to have this on a really nice summer day. Everybody's really relaxed before the chaos of maybe pool time. You're just sitting there and you're like, let's talk about what we're going to do for the holidays. And your, your spouse might be like, well, why are we talking about this? It's the middle of summer. But it's a good time to talk about it because this is when you're clear minded, not stressed out. And this is where it can be set. Like, I want to do things this way this year, or this is what I was thinking about what I wanted to kind of incorporate this year. What are your thoughts? And then kind of opening them up to being receptive of what they might think, also understanding what their concerns are, or if they are the overspender, maybe say, I really want to focus on tightening the budget this year and say, I could take that lead. Maybe you're the budgeter. Maybe you're the one that's like to talk about it. So you could say, I'm going to do this. I just need your help with it. And there, there are apps out there, I'm sure, where you can share gift lists and budgeting. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's, if you're taking the lead, maybe that's what you do. Because some spouses won't want to give up the fun of the getting, the purchasing of the right. gifts. So there's got to be a shared way. If you take the lead, there's got to be a shared way to take that conversation on and guide. Yeah, and you utilize however you want to do it. If you're used to using an app to share your expenses and that's the route you want to go, or even maybe you're more of a pencil paper person, or if it's just one relies on the other to do it, whatever the case might be, do what works for you, but just make sure that you're having these conversations ahead of time, not like right in the mix of, but I, I thought we were going to, you know, be tighter this year with our budget, or why are you spending all that when we should be focused on only one thing? You could still allow the, the spender in the relationship to have that fun and free will, but you also just have to let them understand, like, if you spend 
or if you tighten your budget for the holidays, think of what the possibilities of what we can afford for the following year or what other added things we can do next year, extra trip, extra vacation, or uh, extended, you know, stay for the, the following holiday. So just kind of let them know the reason behind it um, and why it's so important to you. How can we include financially focused gifts under the tree this year without it being like super obvious and to some of our kids lame because they <laughs> might say that. So when it comes to the, your younger children, it's super easy because things like a play cash register is a very, it's a very great gift when it comes to the basics of learning about money, handling it, having that, the, um, go-to conversation with you or another doll on, oh, I'm buying this and you're buying that. And just like that plays off of the, the play supermarkets, the, the farmer markets. I mean, there's so many creative gifts out there for kids these days. I mean, the Melissa and Dougs and all those people, they really create some great toys. Um, some of them can be out of the budget. Some of them are not. So I always say it could be a play tent and you're pretending you have a lemonade stand, or it could be an actual like little play supermarket and utilizing that play approach really great. Um, not only is it great for money skills, but it is for good, you know, gross motor skills, cognitive ability, and um, educational overall. So those younger gifts are really easy. They really won't know. Um, for some of your older kids, you might want to just slip in an extra book. And so on um, our website, we actually have a, I put out a list of financially focused books that are really great, easy reads for um, different various ages. Uh, one of them being for actually the younger kids, the more kindergarten level, um, it's Spend It. I love this book. It's, it's a actually, cute book. It's actually also an Ohio Imagination Library book, which is awesome. So if you're signed up for it, you can get it free for your child. Um, so it's really incorporating little things here and there and books. Are, are not going to break the budget. So slipping a book under there, um, and especially if they can't read yet, sitting down with them and reading those books, really helpful. Our older kids, it comes it becomes a little trickier when it comes to books because they sometimes don't like to read at that age. Um, but there are also some books written in a way for teens where it's conversational and it's just more of like, hey, do you want a hundred dollars or you want a million dollars? Do you want, you know, to start your own business? Here's some books that can help. So that list is on our website and it's super helpful. I will say there is an easy way to get some of these financial focused gifts um, or ideas into the mix too. And one of them is through apps. So a lot of kids are looking, are asking, or I'm assuming so, are asking for like newer tablets or um, phones. And these are, this is the way how you incorporate that financial focused um, idea into like a new device, which would be a financial app of some sort. So I actually have researched this and there's a few apps that you can actually download that are free or a small monthly charge. And Saving Spree is a really great game that kids can play, Bankaroo. Um, there's also some for little kids that's Piggybot and FamZoo, uh, or FamZoo Family Finance. And they also also have the game of life as an app too. So those are also really great games um, through apps that you can incorporate into maybe another gift that they ask for, like an electronic device. And then you have some things here too that have to do with, especially for older kids, with like gifts that have meaning, but also have a dollar amount attached to them that you know, they can understand exactly what it's being spent on. Talk a little bit about those. So I always say that um, less items and more experiences are always quality gifts. So allow, having the conversation with you as the parent, like if you have a family member that wants to give you something that's not just another toy, looking at memberships or passes are really great gifts or savings bonds or contributing to investment. So you can always get a savings bond for anybody as long as you have um, some critical personal information. So like a lot of aunts and uncles wanna buy like a small savings bond for their niece or nephew. And there's tons of information about it um, on treasurydirect.gov. But you basically just talk to the parent and say, I just need their name and social and I'm gonna buy this bond for them. Or you as the parent can say, listen, we wanna minimize the amount of toys in the house. We set up an investment bond uh, investments account for them or we set up a 529 college plan for them and we would like you to contribute to this instead of just buying them a lot of different toys so that alone too is a great option and gift cards and money i mean teenagers are always looking to get money from you for something mm -hmm. and so 
why not incorporate it right into the holidays? I think for the longest time, people thought money's so taboo and it's so like, it's not genuine and you want to get someone something that they, but like a lot of people don't want like stuff or they just don't know what they want at that time. So I always think that gift cards is great for college kids, especially if it's for like a local retail store or pharmacy or, um, like food place, if you know there's a lot of different food franchises around your college campus, gift cards are a great um, gift. And then for your high schoolers and middle schoolers that sometimes have really great ideas, like I want to buy a new snowboard this year, but I know my mom and dad can't buy it, so I'm just going to have people contribute to my fund to buy it. So if you you know, give me money this year, this is what it's going towards. So a lot of family members are like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll contribute to your you know, very expensive snowboard this year, whatever the <laughs> case might be. So that's always a great idea, too. You've given us so much over the course of this episode. Really appreciate it. Is there anything you want to add at this point? I think the last thing I just want to mention when it comes to gift giving is generos- generosity. Um, doing charitable work during the holidays is invaluable. It's so important having that bond with your child to show them, let's pull out some toys you don't play with anymore. Let's donate it to this you know, organization or let's go spend some time at an elderly community, um, a retirement community of some sort, spend time with them, give them that connection that they might not get from their family. Showing them what it means to be charitable is priceless as well. So we always want to include that into our gift giving. Victoria, this has been amazing. I know those who've listened to it have taken so much away from it. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Sometimes as parents, we get wrapped up in TV commercials, right? And lavish window displays that we forget the tiny moments that make this time of year so magical. So it's important to always appreciate what you have and be able to spend time within your means and share that sentiment with your children. Financial literacy, especially during the holidays, is truly the definition of the gift that keeps on giving. For more information on anything Victoria had to say today, please go to com.ohio.gov and take a look under, is it the Consumer Affairs tab? Yeah. Yeah, Consumer Affairs tab. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you next time here on Protecting What Matters.